Hi, my name is Bob Dittmer and welcome to Explorations in Public Relations. In this short series of video explorations, we take a look at the practice and the profession of public relations today. Today our guest is Julie Vincent, APR, and Julie is here to talk to us about executive media training. Julie, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Now you do have some experience in companies and corporations working with executives over a number of years. I do you? about 30 years worth, I hate to say. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> Give me a give our audience a reason for understanding why executives actually need to be trained to be able to talk to the media. Don't they have that sort of innate ability, or like well, anyone else? Some do and some don't. Okay. And you know, uh, I don't want to pick on any one profession, but you can't just assume that someone who's in the corner office has any other training that we've had. And mm -hmm. um, the problem is that they don't always ask for it, or they don't always know they need to ask for it. And they assume that that being able to go on camera comes with the territory right. of their of their position. So. Uh, it's really important to have someone in the ranks who's who can offer that kind of counsel. Gotcha. When you talk about executive media training, is it something that you actually have to sell to the executive, or are executives sort of, uh, when presented the opportunity, running to you to ask for this kind of uh, training, this preparation? I've had a little bit of both. My history has been that, um, you know, somebody who outranks you like by 12 grades mm -hmm. when you're young and getting into this, um, that what you really need is trust mm -hmm. uh, on both mm -hmm. sides. I mean, they have to understand that you're there to make their life better, not to poke fun at them or tell them they have a shiny bald spot, but mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that your job, and sometimes you have to tell them this, your job as you see it as a PR professional uh, is to make sure that they look the best they can possibly look and, and right. feel the best they can about it. And when it's presented that way, I think that they're really, you know, I have, a lot, I've, I have had people through the years say, don't let anybody know I called you, but can you come help me <laughs> with this? And so that's great, but the trust right. has to be there. And a lot of times there's either a big age difference or you just don't, you're not really in the same circles right. as some of the senior leadership. And so you have to kind of let them know that you can provide that service. For those who may not have ever done this sort of thing with cameras running or with a recorder running, what's different about a conversation with a reporter that might be um, uh, significantly different than a conversation with a friend or a colleague or some other business acquaintance? I think if you are a CEO or on a senior mm -hmm. leadership team, you're more worried about saying something wrong mm -hmm. and then it's, either, it's so public. And of course, if you say anything wrong today, it's, it's in the social media space sure. in 15 in, seconds. Right. But I think the biggest thing is that they would like to have a safe place to practice. Right. I mean, obviously they get with their senior leadership team or their general counsel or both, and they find out the parameters of what they can say. Mm -hmm. But they don't always um, think about what those questions they hope they're not asked are. Right. And they don't have anybody that's going to play devil's advocate. It seems like, you know, it is kind of lonely at the top, and mm -hmm. a lot of times the inner circle isn't the, the group uh, who's going to come to his or her aid and sure. say, you know what, let's duck over here and practice and I'll act like I'm a really, really um, uh, a reporter that's going to ask you some below the belt things. Let's just practice and hope that they right. don't happen. Right. They just don't think like that. They get ready for all the questions they expect. They don't know to get ready for the ones they don't. And sometimes the conversational environment is very different. It could be adversarial. We could be sitting, you could be sitting talking to a reporter in a studio with lights as we are today mm -hmm. and cameras running out in front of us. That is intimidating for someone who hasn't done that, isn't it? It is, and one of the stories that I had uh, that I was thinking about is um, I did have a senior leadership team member who was a female mm -hmm. who was very fair. Her skin was very, very pale almost. Mm -hmm. Her mm -hmm. hair was very light, um, and she didn't necessarily like to wear a lot of makeup, which right. is fine on a day-to-day -day basis, sure. but I was taking her down to a TV studio with the bright lights. She had never really done it before. I really didn't have a fear of how she would be on camera because mm -hmm. I thought she sort of had the charisma to get sure. her through and she was a very bright lady but she didn't have any lipstick on she had very little eye makeup on and I didn't think she would like the end result camera and would I wash her out absolutely wash her mm -hmm. out so mm -hmm. and she would just be featureless so I pulled her aside and I said you know it's not really my place to tell you about makeup mm -hmm. but I am going to tell you that you're not going to be happy with right. the result because here's what's going to happen I said do you have any lipstick with you in your purse? She said, I don't use lipstick. I said, well, we're going to cut the end off mine, <laughs> and we're going to use it on you. And of course, her eyes got this big, and she said, we're going to do what? And I said, seriously, you will thank me later mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. doing this. So you almost have to make yourself up like you're going on Broadway and overdo it so that you like the result after it's muted with all the lights. And it was just something she would have no way of knowing, but she was so grateful afterward. And you know, we got, we're like lipstick sisters now. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so part of the training is really 
the, the, as you mentioned earlier, the creation of that level of trust that I know what this is like and I can help you do this well. It is, and they have to trust you because, you know, let's say you're a manager level or a director right. level even. Um, you know, I've, I've, had, I've gone up to a CEO and said, um, it's about five minutes till we go on, spit your gum in here. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like the kids, put your gum in here because they just don't think about it. Right. Right. Um, I've had to tell um, different people to, to take the change out of their pocket because when they're nervous, they were playing with the change mm -hmm. and the microphone mm -hmm. would pick it up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had to tell a guy who had a bald spot that I was going to take my makeup out and I was going to like dab a little mm -hmm. bit. You know, another guy isn't going to say that to another guy and they're right. also not going to have the makeup. So right. I always tried to have, I was carried around lots of makeup that was even colors that weren't my colors that were mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. worn so that I could say, you know, and I would always try to make a joke out of it. You know, you're not going to like this, but guess what? We're going to put a little, and I would just mm -hmm. start to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, you know, after a while, they'd say thanks, you know, because they don't want to know. You don't want to tell them they have a bald spot. You just want to tell them that you want them to look better. Right. <laughs> and you want them to understand that their expertise is being a senior leader, and your expertise is how to do good media interviews. Absolutely. And you're there to help them do that. Absolutely. And that's right. all about trust. Sure. And, and it's confidence in the, in the, the PR professional mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. you know, you might think it, but you're thinking, can I really go tell? the CEO that right. I have to cover his right. bald spot? Do we really have that kind of relationship? You, you only kind of do it once and, you, and, you're, and you're sort of there. And I use the term booger friend. You're kind mm -hmm. of the booger friend. And, and what that means is that, that you're, there's enough trust between the two that, that that senior leadership person knows you're working in his or her best interest mm -hmm. and that you would even tell them if they had a bat in the cave. So that's gotcha. what the booger friend is. And, <laughs> and that's what I even teach in my classes. You know, you want to get that kind of trust, and, but you have to have that kind of confidence in yourself sure. to say, sure. you know, maybe your color would be better if you, if you sat on your mm -hmm. jacket. Mm -hmm. You know, just little mm -hmm. things. And then they'll say, oh my gosh, it is better. I, wouldn't, I didn't know that. And then they call you the next time. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the, the preparation of the executive, but one of the, the other things that we often have to do is to make them understand that a conversation in front of a camera as we're doing today is different than a regular conversation. There are tips and techniques you can share with executives. What might some of those be? It's kind of funny you say that because I think the senior leadership that I've worked with, they fall into two categories. They either don't say enough mm -hmm. and maybe mm -hmm. go blank once they say and we're on, mm -hmm. <laughs> or the nerves make them talk too much. Too much. And that's where the security problem really comes in. Mm -hmm. So you either have a senior leadership person who afterwards says, oh, man, I can't believe I forgot to say that, that, and that, mm -hmm. which you can help them with because you give them their three key messages and you practice right. and all of that. Right. Or they said, oh, my gosh, I just didn't stop soon enough, and I didn't mean to say that last thing because I mm -hmm. just opened up another can of worms, mm -hmm. and I got a follow-up question, and I wasn't ready for that. So that's what I see. And you mentioned something that I like to, to revisit, and you said preparation. And there is some preparation involved in this, isn't there? The executive doesn't just walk into a studio or walk into their office with a reporter, sit down, and begin to have a chat. Right, right. And, you know, I would always I talk about the three key messages. Mm -hmm. You know, the tape's going to roll. We don't know what's going to happen on, in the edit bay. Right. But I can tell you, if you don't say it, it isn't going to appear. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what are the three things that, have, in a perfect world, you got in? Right. And, and we practice those. I also would make them practice answering questions they hope they never got. Mm -hmm, Sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, and I would be cruel. Um, and I knew I had done my job if afterward they would say, you were so much worse on me than the reporter was. Mm -hmm. I'd say, done, mm -hmm. my job is done. Absolutely. That's yes. exactly yeah. what, and, you know, that's exactly what the we're supposed to do. The training should be more difficult than the actual yes. event. And one other thing, people in a senior leadership position oftentimes are there because they're extremely passionate. Right. That also yes. makes them sometimes come off defensive mm -hmm. or argumentative mm -hmm. or, um, you know, and, or, or try to pick a fight with the, <laughs> with the reporter. And mm -hmm. we both know that you don't ever try to litigate something, you know, in the media and right. on tape because you're never going to win. Right. So a lot of times, you know, I'll be argumentative with them and let them blow up at me. Mm -hmm. And then I'll say, okay, now when you get there, this is exactly what we cannot do. Right. But vent with me. Get it all out. Yep, yep. You know, I think that's... If somebody had done that with our poor little BP guy, he might have not said he wanted his life back. You know, say it at, say it at breakfast. One would certainly hope. Don't say it. Mm -hmm. Don't say it on the mm -hmm. camera. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or maybe talk about the language that one should use and maybe avoid phrases like the little people. Yeah, yeah. that too. Yeah, yeah. What, uh, if you were to share some advice with a young public relations professional who has to, for the first time, convince a president, a CEO, uh, the director of their agency that they need to get some training. Mm -hmm. 
How would you suggest that they sell that idea to their boss? Well, the first thing you do, I think, is you have to offer the service. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. they may not even think of it. They may not be ignoring you. They just may not have been there. Yep. And a lot of times their schedules are so full that they don't even look that next day ahead. Mm -hmm. But you, but as your job, you should be knowing if they're going to have a media, you know, interview set up. You need to know that. So I always just inserted myself and I said, even if you know, I'd love to do it the day before so you could right. sleep on it and think about it, and then we do it again the next morning. Um, if your schedule doesn't allow that or your travel schedule doesn't, um, we can do back and forth with emails, some mm -hmm. tips, and get mm -hmm. your key messages down. Um, but I really was the proactive one and said. Uh, you know, part of why you pay me right. is I bring these, the skill set to the table. I don't know if you need it or not, especially if you're brand new there. I don't know if you need it or not, but you can probably do a little check around and see if people think <laughs> you could help. And then once you get that nod, you just need to be confident mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. be intimidated, you know, because you just have to go in and say, this is what I can provide for you. It's almost kind of sort of like a life coach. You know, once people are exposed to something like that, they say, you know, it's not... It's not a bad thing. I, you know, it's, they're just trying to make me look better. And, and mm -hmm. if you put it that way and just say, I just don't think you would be happy with that answer. Let's, let's talk about it again. Because my job is to make you happy right. once it's over. Did you ever have an executive say, no thanks, I don't need it, and then regret it later? Yes, and they only do that once. <laughs> <laughs> it takes care of itself. I imagine it does, <laughs> it doesn't it? It takes care of itself. <laughs> Julie, thanks for joining us today. Okay. Great. Thank and you thank for you for me. joining us today on uh, Explorations and Public Relations, where we've been talking about the concept of executive media training, preparing senior executives for interviews with the media, as Julie and I have just done. Yes. Please <laughs> tune in in the future as we have more such explorations of the various factors involved in public relations as we continue this series of Explorations in Public Relations.